What if the United States was reversed? Or what if the United States was in Mirror World? Here's our new flag because it obviously has to be green. It can't have any red, white, and blue. Our motto is from east to west one. Eagle over the mountain is the anthem. And then the capital is the uh, Redwood District. Staring at this thing is actually making my brain hurt. I like that there are all new states. And I like that there's not a whole lot of squares over here. Oh, wait, there still are some straight lines, though, out this way. California has been broken apart, but we do have the peninsula down here. France controls the Bahamas, but I'm really enjoying all these state flags. Some are more cursed than others. I'm actually totally down to mirror the USA like this, just for the simple fact that our state flags become a whole lot better. Also, there seems to be a random Yugoslavian country somewhere in here. Wait, so are these mostly Native Americans? I'm now just realizing that. This weird backwards North America was actually colonized by the Spanish in the 1500s. I'm confused, but also very intrigued by this map. What if the world had 99% less of its problems? Italy and Spain control southern France, Ireland and Belgium control northern France, and then of course the rest goes to the Germans. Interesting that you kept the UK from taking anything here. I'm pretty sure that was on purpose. Maybe they don't exist either. Really want to see what the British Isles look like in this world now. This might be possibly one of the craziest alt histories I've ever come across. Our world would never be the same with this one change. Live MSNBC reports the biggest disaster in a superhero film since Batman and Robin. Iron Man flops at the box office in 2008. No plans for a sequel or cinematic universe, says Marvel. Oof. That's literally all it would have taken. If that movie was bad, I can't even begin to tell you how different of a world we'd live in. Literally all these movies and TV shows would not exist. It could have been just as simple as them not casting this man to be Iron Man. I don't think they'd have this much success without him. I would be curious what movies would look like nowadays though. Maybe old Western films just have a random resurgence. What if the Louisiana territory that France once had was actually just a sea? This is now the Louisiana see. Obviously, everything changed once the U.S. purchased this territory from France. Manifest Destiny just continues. We go out to the Pacific. We go to war with Mexico. But if this whole thing is just a massive inland sea, then Mexico actually remains pretty strong. And Canada is also going to keep Oregon, Idaho, Washington. Although it seems like they might have renamed some of those places along with the city. Well, some of the cities are the same. There are a little bit more ports over here, I'm assuming. Now, that map didn't include it, but it's also probably safe to say that Canada would have bought Alaska. Or actually, this would have been British Canada. They would have sold it to the British Empire and then Canada would have eventually got it with their independence. Would there even be a North American superpower in this world? I wonder. I feel like it'd be pretty even, although the US might be the weakest in this scenario. Canada's issue is most of their land is just frozen and unlivable, but they can try to fit as much new population into this new territory. Mexico is probably the most dominant in this world, but they're not like as dominant as the US is in real life. Imagine World War One when Germany asked Mexico to declare war on the US. You think they'd do it now? I think they definitely might consider it. This is such an interesting scenario. I really like it. Different types of alt history enjoyers. What if Germany won World War II versus what if Germany won World War I? What if the USSR won the Cold War? What if the Roman Empire didn't fall? What if the Valos France faction lost the 100 years war? Or finally, what if Christopher Columbus was a dustman in 60s Czechoslovakia who created a space agency with Elon Musk and Drake to bring humans on the sun? No, no, I think they actually have a point here. The weirder, the better, I find at least. The 2023 North Sea Tsunami, a huge submarine landslide at the edge of Norway's continental shelf set off a series of huge tsunamis that ravaged the North Sea. And obviously the casualties were felt all the way in France and Germany, all the while millions were affected. I would assume if this is the place of origin for the tsunami, Iceland would take a pretty big punch, but Iceland has a lot of elevation and also there's not a whole lot of people living in it. It's mostly the UK that gets pretty messed up. It's like a Viking invasion all over for them. But since a lot of the Netherlands is under sea level, I would assume that'd be very bad for them as well. Surprised to see so much of Denmark get affected since, like, Denmark would almost be safe, I feel? Maybe not. It depends. It's a scary thought, but also kind of fascinating. The scary thing is this did actually happen 8,000 years ago. There's research that shows that this tsunami wave went as far in as 18 miles in Scotland. Certain parts, of course, the lower elevation parts. How even big was this wave? Do we want to know? I don't think we want to know. Okay, at first I just thought this was a cool scenario. Now I'm actually, like, uh, terrified. A United States presidential election, but held in the Rockstar universe. Oh, another words, we have San Andreas, Liberty City, New Austin. There's also a lot of Red Dead included in this as well, which explains exactly what happened to Texas. I can just imagine the rock star GTA political ads you could like listen while you're driving on the streets. So the liberal candidate or war and peace. Oh, I get it. That's hilarious. She's from Liberty City. She got pretty destroyed, not necessarily in the popular 
vote, but in the Electoral College. Oh man, I wish Vice City was included on this map. This reminded me of the old GTA San Andreas gang war that you used to be able to have. Not GTA 5, I mean GTA San Andreas. But instead of like gang territory, can we just do US presidential elections? Like a map game, but in the Rockstar universe. That's literally one of my favorite things ever from a Rockstar game. I literally beat the game, replayed it just to get back to this moment and stay in this moment the whole time. I'm gonna have flashbacks this moment if my son ever asks me, Dad, were you ever in a gang? Thank you for reminding me of this moment. Jump through the singularity. What the, what happened to this universe? The year is 2032, the year we lost them. It happened so fast. A couple minutes after every TV channel was reporting on it. Breaking news, all of Asia, Eastern Europe, and East Africa gone. Over 5 billion people missing. So this is just like if Thanos snapped and he just physically took 50% of all things. I kind of like this concept a little bit more. Now I understand why he really needed to do it. He's just really not a fan of Sisley. He made sure to take out Sisley. Can you imagine the pandemonium that would take place if this just happened one day? Like, we just woke up and all of this was gone. The land and the people, everything. Like, North America wouldn't technically be affected that much. I guess trade would be kind of messed up and diplomacy, I guess, you know, things like that. But ignore all of that. If this was possible, I think it would literally collapse civilization. Which I think that's kind of what this map is trying to show. Like, people would just be freaking out. All these places have just broken out into a civil war. Australia doesn't even look recognizable. Is that New Zealand that took over most of this? And as you can see, the US has gone pretty nuts taking over Canada. Canada and parts of Mexico. I'm assuming that's because both these countries have collapsed in the chaos, which is understandable. I think the US also took over all of the Caribbean and the Panama Canal. I mean, at this point, who's really gonna stop us? We could really just do whatever. Is this Germany or France that have taken over most of Europe? I don't know. They're just focused on what's going on in this continent. The aliens just did this one day just to mess with us. Ah yes, this classic, what if Italy won World War II? And this has got to be like the most high quality map I've seen in a long time. There's no reason why I should be able to zoom in this much. So the Italians must have won their war against Greece, as well as with a lot of the Balkans in general. Then on top of that, not only did they keep their Italian colony Libya, but they've expanded upon it, taking over most of the British controlled stuff. Of course, they dominated Ethiopia in this universe as well. The biggest thing here though is there must have been a weird stalemate that happened in Germany. Or maybe Germany was just impacted so heavily in their war with the Soviets, which they won that war with the Soviets, as you can see it's all like broken up over here, that they really weren't able to compete with Benito Mussolini and Benito Mussolini just kind of pushed around everybody. I would assume he's got a pretty nice alliance with Francisco Franco and Spain. I wonder if the Italians control France in this scenario too, which would also give them a pretty big puppet government over French West Africa, so they would control a lot of this. He really did restore that ancient Roman Empire border. And in Imperial Railway map of the ancient Roman Empire, or I guess if the Roman Empire never fell and they started building rail everywhere. Now this is not the Roman Empire at their extent. They did lose some of the territory over this way, but overall this is looking pretty good. Imagine this was high speed rail. I'm gonna give me some numbers. How long would it take to get from like southern France to this part of Turkey? Like. 10 hours? Would that be possible? 12 hours? Oh good, it is mostly high-speed rail with all these different color lines. The Mesopotamia Express, due to recent tensions on the border with Persia, the line stops at this place and no longer crosses the border. Ah, uh, so the emperor must have did this for his birthday or something. Or wait, no, this is just uh, July 12th, citizens ride for free. I feel like it's pretty safe to imagine the Roman Empire would have very nice public transit. I mean, they were out here building roads everywhere in the first place, so I think their public transit today would probably be like one of the best. Well, another reason why I cry whenever I read about the fall of Rome. The retaking of New York City after the spring riots of 2029. This is the second Northeast revolt. So it looks like they launched an invasion from like Rhode Island and Connecticut, also Long Island as well. And they slowly began to approach New York City. Now before they actually hit the boroughs though, they wait. They prepare their invasion because they got to retake this somehow. Oh, they only, they take it in chunks. Then Manhattan is the last holdout. That would not be fun to try to get all that. And then boom, Jersey goes with it and the rest of upper state New York. What kind of massive revolt had to take place where they'd have to land in a different state? Was Boston revolting too? So this is some sort of civil war, I'm guessing. At this point, I mean, this is on the scale of a second civil war. That fighting in Long Island would like momentarily be like a second Vietnam too. Where support is highest for rejoining the Union. So this is obviously a no-no USA that has won the civil war, but not only did they win, they continued to expand after that, taking huge chunks of Mexico with it. Also, they have 
Nevada, California, Nevada, New Mexico, Arizona. But this is a poll to see how many people are interested in rejoining with the North. So unsurprisingly, the states that border the North are going to be more interested. So Maryland, Delaware, wait, how'd they get all the way up there? I didn't realize that. And these states were literally in the North, so I can understand why they wanted to rejoin the Union. Missouri is a little bit of a surprise, but they're also pretty North. But yeah, these deep South states, they really don't want to go back. I would assume Cuba and Mexico and other parts that the South has annexed probably don't really care. I mean, they, I guess they want to do it. California definitely wants to do it. Overall, these numbers are not looking good if they're trying to rejoin. I mean, a lot of this stuff is below 50%. I can understand why a lot of these states would probably hold a grudge. I like that this is just focused on one electoral campaign. There's so many other things to think about here, too. I covered this idea last week, and I guess this map has expanded upon that. The U.S. and Canada, if they only followed the 49th parallel. Now, you'd think most of the changes would only remain around here, but I guess that is actually not the case. Maybe they did it for some reason to have, like, a nice even number of stars. Wait, we literally call a state Canada? You can't just do that. At least throw new in front of it like we did with New Mexico. But you changed New Mexico too? I guess that would be two really unoriginal state names. You just can't be that unoriginal US. We finally also got rid of most of upstate New York and gave that just all Ontario. And we fixed the border gore that would be Michigan. Okay, Canada, please just give us all this land just to fix this. Somebody, you know what? I still think it should be Wisconsin's though. There's still border gore. And there'll also be a little bit of thickness out of Vermont because they get some more stuff. And we have still our state Nova Scotia, formerly the Canadian province. So Canada isn't even its name anymore. It's just called the Hudsonia. Maybe it would remain a Canadian colony at this point. I mean, it's basically just a Greenland. There's like very little people live up here. It's mostly tundra. What are you going to do with it? Like this is all of Canada's most valuable land. This is where half the country lives. Not sure why we had to make Idaho thicker and also why we got rid of Oregon, but uh, it doesn't matter. Oh, does this somehow still keep the 50 states? Is that why things were changed? I see also the capital has changed to St. Louis. And yeah, you tried to keep 50 states. Very cool. What if the world was 12 countries, each center on one of the 12 largest cities. So North America is technically divided by three countries, although it's mostly just two. Our largest New York City is getting most of like the old colonial American territory, but also like all of Canada. Then Mexico takes like, you know, their old stuff, California, Nevada. But they're also dipping a little bit into South America. Sao Paulo, Brazil takes over almost all of this continent down here. Wait, I didn't realize New York even gets a piece of this. We have Cairo, which has taken over all of Africa. This would be a very powerful nation. Wait, what city controls all of Europe? Is it London or something? Berlin? Oh wait, there is no country. Europe is just unclaimed territory or something? Obviously the largest cities in the world are going to come from this part of Asia. That's why this place is a lot more balkanized. Tokyo doesn't even look fun. I guess they have that part of Alaska over here, but... I don't know. I don't think they're that powerful. South Japan gets a lot of Korea. Then there's like three Chinas between Beijing, Shanghai, and then this part of India actually gets a little bit of China. Obviously, Australia and Oceania as a whole is going to be splintered. And India has been balkanized too. Now I want to see a war that takes place. This would be absolute chaos. This is literally just like 1984. Oh, this is some sort of tri-continental federation. The capital is Cairo. All of Africa, a lot of the Middle East, and Europe? Oh, they're winning. If they could just stay organized, they is winning. They're going to sweep through the East at least. The West will still be fighting amongst each other. Oh, this thing is not even close. I always forget that New York doesn't even hit the top 10 of biggest cities in the world anymore. Mexico and Brazil are in fifth and fourth, but everyone else comes from Asia. The closest European city is Moscow, and they're in 24th place. Of course, this really depends on just how you judge cities, like the metropolitan area, the city proper. It's, it's confusing. Urban area. Now let's do like the top 25 cities. That map would be nuts. And big thanks to Twickenham, the Polish, Lithuanian, Commonwealth, Drew's Argentinian grandpa, Austin Powers, Powers. $20 is a lot, Drew. Fat Norwal, Barnsky W, Isaac I guess, Bring Back Poland, Cowboys 83, Price, Go I Stole, Drews, Pugs Dog, Mundy, Lundy, Philip R. S., Robert E., Rye the, the Mexican 7 And why am I doing this?